Welcome to episode 175 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg. My co-host, Warren Sklar, is on vacation this week out in London, enjoying his, his time as we've been seeing some posts. But back on the show, Mr. Jeff Gamet. Welcome back to the show, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing well. It's great to see you. Good to see and you as well. I will do my best to live up to Warren's standards. Yeah. There's some high standards here we got to follow here. So, uh, yeah. But uh, so we had a busy week here with Apple, uh, right? As we were recording the show, they already posted all the quarterly results, and so we'll be talking about that. Some some new stories. Uh, iOS 15.1 hit the streets, and iOS 15.2 followed suit right after that. So, as you can anticipate, we're going to have a lot to talk about this week. So let's uh, go ahead and just jump right in here. Uh, so okay. the first. Uh, sorry, I have here Mac rumors. Uh, display analyst 4.7 inch 5G iPhone SE Plus coming in 2022. The iPhone SE 3 with larger display is planned for 2024. So, rumor has suggested, so we're doing a little rumors this week. Rumors have suggested that Apple is working on a next generation version of the iPhone SE that is set to be released in 2022. A new rumor f- uh, from the display analyst, Ross Young, suggests that Apple will call this device the iPhone SE Plus, even though it is not going to be getting a bigger display. And he's saying uh, the upcoming SE will feature the same 4.7 inch LCD screen. It's available on the current version, but uh, I think really it's going to be, it's going to have a lot of what the 10R, 10, the 10R was, uh, but updated uh, guts and of course 5G, which I think will probably be the, big, the biggest thing. Because that's the really the biggest downfall of the SE right now is uh, you're stuck in the LTE world. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is something exciting. I mean, Apple definitely needs to keep, keep going with the lower end market. Uh, what do you think? I think this is not a difficult prediction to make. Yeah. Um, at at some point, five G is coming to the to the SE line. It's it just seems like a given. Uh, the part that uh, that I think is wrong mm-hmm. is the plus. Yeah. Because uh, I I think they'll just keep going with uh, with the SE name, and uh, you know there could be a number after it or not. But I don't think they'll put a plus. On it me surprised i would be all surprised if uh, if they did uh, if they did do that um they've been kind of staying away from the s and the uh, plus and all that it seems as of late so mm-hmm. we've gone 11 12 and 13 with no in, no no derivatives after that. i think what the last one was the the 10r i believe or the 10s i think yeah, one of the last uh, the secondary models so yeah so i would uh, yeah. be all surprised they wouldn't do I, that not do that and I don't think there's any product Apple is currently making that uses Plus or no. or uh, a, a, any of the what I'll now call old school monikers. Yep. Nope. That's for sure. Uh, so I don't see it coming back. Nope. I definitely don't think so as well. Um, next story. This is uh, actually about the iOS iOS update. Uh, those of you still on iOS 14, which I'm sure there's a fair amount of um, of you out there, Apple did release an. Of an updated version of iOS 14.8.1 and iPad OS 14.8.1 with some more security updates. Um, it was some minor updates uh, to both both OSs uh, a little more than a month after the 14.8 version came out. That was a huge security fix. Um, and it can be downloaded as free software update, as, of course, if you go into the settings, general software update. Um, so highly recommend that you go out and download this if you are still continuing to work beyond uh, iOS 14. Which uh, Apple is making it optional still. They aren't forcing it, forcing it just yet. So I'm not forcing it, but really suggesting it. I should, I guess, I should say. So, uh, but uh, I'm sure you agree. We anybody who's still running Rock and 14.8, uh, go go get this update, right? Go get the update. <coughs> oh, oh, uh, I'm going to channel my inner Warren. No, I don't know why <laughs> you aren't already running <laughs> iOS 15. But if you're not, just put this update on your mm. phone. How was that? No, that was perfect. And he's already on. Awesome. We know. I, I we know what he's already on fifteen point two beta, and he probably did it while he was in London. So well, I guess we'll find out next week. But probably because he's just a wild man. He really is when it comes to beta. Uh, so go out, get that update. Um, 
thought this was an interesting story. This is, again, all our Mac rumors here. Uh, Amazon has uh, is going to be coming out with TVs about time. Took them, like, forever because that was always rumored that they were going to come out with models that would integrate their Amazon Echo uh, or the A-Lady. Uh, but mm-hmm. the reason we're, I'm talking about, what we're talking about here today is uh, the Fire TVs will support AirPlay 2 and HomeKit in a future update they announced um, uh, this week. Uh, Amazon's Omni and 4 Series Omni. TVs they launched this week, um, which are featuring 4K HDR, voice controls, Amazon A-Lady, and close uh, close integration with the Fire TV use experience. No surprise there. Uh, and upon launch, uh, uh, they they uh, with the TVs they are going to add that support with AirPlay 2 and HomeKit really soon. I think that's a smart move there on Amazon's part. So now you can use your iPhone, your iPad. Uh, to be able to integrate to a TV. So I'm not even sure who's making these TVs, uh, but oh, actually I think they're saying it's uh, Toshiba and in- Insignia, which is Insignia is basically a Best Buy brand. Um, mm-hmm. um, so it is low end, but hey, you know, I've, Amazon, like anything, getting into the market. Uh, what do you think of this? Yeah, of course. It, uh, Amazon has the model of we let other people make stuff <laughs> and then... Right we will eventually put our own sticker on something and, uh, and then just try and take that market. Um, so yeah, of course, Amazon TVs, the, uh, the thing with home kit and airplay support, mm-hmm. I like that they're doing it. And I think it's a strategic move, not specifically to, uh, to get people in the Apple ecosystem to buy their televisions, but, uh, also because if, you want to try and forestall antitrust investigations, a great way to do it is to put someone else's services onto your device. Yep. That's the easiest way to, to, to get it, I think. Yep. So it- and, uh, and this is the right service to put on because currently um, Apple services aren't that big of a threat to Amazon services. Yep. No, not at all. So it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Won't be too much effect of what we what we talk about, but uh, uh, it's a it's a TV. We all have our TVs, and I'm going to sh- going to be uh, pretty confident that Amazon's going to sell quite a few of them. Um, I'm sure they will because it will be priced to undercut their competitors. No, no question. Uh, next story: Apple Music is now going to be available on the PS5. Uh, this is in Engadget. Uh, now, being able to listen to your music while playing games and watching music videos, it'll be 4K uh, in the Apple Music app. Um, so Spotify is not the only service in town for PlayStation 5 owners. You can now stream music uh, while you're playing any games uh, on uh, on your PS5. Uh, this is the first game console that's going to have Apple Music integration. And, of course, subscribers have access to 90 million-plus songs. So this, uh, this is good news. I think Apple is continuing to ex- extend their services for uh, other platforms and just gets gets more stuff out there, uh, don't you think? Yep. Yep. The uh, the Netflix strategy is the strategy to, to yep. follow, which is get your service on every device you possibly can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and... Uh, one more change here we'll talk about uh, is uh, actually not a change. This was a, a kind of, I think, a, a little bit of a snafu on Apple's uh, part. Uh, we reported last week that Apple confer- uh, had uh, th- that Apple was offering six percent cash back with the Apple Card, but it turns out it was an error and it will be issuing credits to affected users. It was actually over a day after we had talked about this last week uh, that. Uh, you're only eligible three percent cash back, and and many users have noticed that some were showing six percent. Uh, and it said in an email to the Apple Card users that were affected, they confirmed the error, and then they will honor the six percent cash back for the affected users. Well, that's nice of them. You made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, you can't uh, <laughs> you can't just go back on it, <laughs> right? Yep, they handled that exactly right. Yeah, fess up to the error, but. Follow through for the people that it that it impacted. Absolutely, but it just, well just seems seems like just a lot of problems with the Apple Card lately. <laughs> I mean, there was there was problems with the Mac purchases when the Macs came out, uh, right. and then the, of course I reported on the iPhone 13 snafu. I almost didn't get my iPhone, and uh, I don't know what's going on with uh, Apple and, and Goldman Sachs with their 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 continued issues with Apple Card. 
That's a really good question. And I bet that uh, sitting in on some of the meetings where they're trying to hash this out would be really uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, I, I bet there there are some uh, uh, angry voices on Apple's side. There's got to be. There's got to be. So especially you have now to give out this extra 3%. Well, it was a one-time shot. So, you know, it's not, not going to cost them that much. Um yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it's not. No, that, that's that's a that's a little peon, a little min, minuscule of what the Apple is in their trillion dollars. <laughs> so, um, right. And uh, Apple TV, Apple TV Plus. I thought this was interesting news. I am a Comcast or Xfinity customer. Uh, it is coming to the uh, Comcast and Sky devices, which is in the UK. So the Apple TV Plus uh, will be coming to Comcast devices, which there is their X1 technology. So it expands the range even more with Apple TV's streaming service uh, and expanding its audience to even more customers. Because Comcast, uh, yeah, it's quite quite a quite an audience. There's a lot of customers around the United States that are are Comcast Xfinity customers. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. it was bro- the, the this news was actually broke actually uh, today as we as we record this uh, from the CEO of, uh, of Comcast, uh, Brian Roberts. And he said during the company's uh, quarterly earnings call that they had agreed with a deal with Apple to, to, that will see Apple TV Plus come to the Comcast devices on, and on its own Xfinity Stream app. So you actually, you know, I use the Xfinity Stream app all the time uh, for my iPhone and my iPad. So now I'm going to go in one place, be able to watch Apple TV Plus without having to bounce out and go into another app. So this is pretty exciting news, I think. Uh, yeah, it is. And uh, there we go. The Netflix strategy, yeah. once again. Yeah. Um, the w- Here we go. Okay, <laughs> I see some irony. Yeah. Uh, because what Comcast is doing is what I think Apple wanted to do with Apple TV Plus and, uh, well, with the whole TV app system and failed which is to give us a unified experience for all of our content. And, uh, and Apple really hasn't been able to get the buy-in that they needed. But with Comcast bringing Apple TV Plus into their fold, then uh, that's actually getting us closer to what I think Apple's intent was. Yep. And uh, it's just not Apple that's going to pull it off. Nope. nope. And they just continue to add to more platforms. And my question is, is, is the Apple TV device, gonna, is it going to still continue to be relevant? I don't know if, as they continue to... Yes. Uh, and I guess that, that probably that would be a good answer because, you know, I I agree with you because the, the Apple TV device is, I, I think, is probably far superior as far as interface goes. Um but uh, but as long as Apple wants to continue on with having their device as well as being on others, I think it'll all work in harmony, I guess. It, it will. And uh, the Apple TV device, it's more than just Apple TV+. Plus. True. It's, uh, it's a casual gaming console. It is uh, 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 a home kit bridge. It is a place where you can access other Apple services that aren't part of Apple TV Plus, and uh, so, and so it's it's a Nexus device for all these things that Apple offers. And when you switch over to Apple TV Plus on other devices, it's just Apple's content service. Yep. So there there's still a place for the the T- Apple TV box. That makes sense. And I expect that that place will exist for quite a while. Absolutely. And then uh, last story, I uh, we talked about it on the show last week with uh, Brian and Holden. Uh, we uh, This was some breaking news last week that Apple had introduced and uh, released a polishing cloth. <laughs> and it was a, probably one of the more important products out there. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but... Worthy of a keynote. Uh, it was worthy. It wasn't even worth was, Did they mention the keynote? I don't even remember them mentioning it. I don't think no, they didn't. Yeah, they we didn't. found out after. So, of course, I promptly went and bought it. It was $20. Um, and it, actually, I'm excited. It's coming tomorrow. So, <laughs> I'll get to be able to see it. But uh, that's awesome. So, some people have already got it, including iFixit. And I've got a link here in the news here. This is a teardown teaser. They were doing a teardown of the MacBook Pro polishing cloth. It's a detour because, of course, they're, they're, they're more their focus of getting the teardown 
of the brand new M1 Pro and M1 Pro Mac, M1 Max uh, MacBook Pros. Um, so they actually did a teardown of the of the polishing cloth, and to, to, to tell you uh, uh, to tell you what it's made of, and uh, it's got some fuzziness to it. It's synthetic leather. It seems like just kind of similar to the iPad case that that uh, it, in, in the thin layer of micro, uh, microfiber on the inside. They tore it down, and they said it's it's a zero out of ten repairability. I'm surprised. That's what I expected <laughs> it would get. And shame on Apple. Gosh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I have heard that the uh, the cloth that Apple's selling for nineteen dollars is actually designed specifically to uh, to not damage the uh, their own displays, right. and it ships with their their uh, display. So uh, selling it as a separate thing now, you can get it for your MacBook Pro since it has a uh, the same type of display. Um, I guess that makes sense. Yep. Uh, but if you're going to charge $19 for it, you probably should give people uh, a really good explanation of what it is that makes this this cloth yeah. cost that much. And and my guess is that there actually is something special about it. Yeah. But since Apple hasn't uh, uh, told us exactly what that is, they will just have to live with the ribbing that they will that we will continually give them for selling us a $19 cleaning cloth. Well, I hope it's going to do well with my, you know, because I, I believe it is okay working using it for your, with your iPad or your iPhone, uh, your Apple Watch for that matter, or even uh, any other MacBook Pro, because uh, it is a microfiber cloth. So, uh, mm-hmm. uh, so yep. I will report back and my, and my findings with uh, these, this, this fine quality cloth I'll be receiving uh, next week. I can't wait <laughs> to, to hear how it improves your life. I, I, I can't wait either. It's worth every penny of that $20 I spent. So, can you get Apple Care on that? I, I hope so. <laughs> I don't want it to tear. Uh, right. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the topics this week. Um, and as I said earlier, uh, Apple's uh, announced their quarterly results uh, this today as we record this. So, we're still absorbing all the information. So, we're going to just kind of get briefly talk about what the results were. Um, always have links to uh, to Six Colors because uh, uh, Jason Snell and his crew always does a great and analysis with some barcode graphs making everything pretty and finding out what everything is uh, done because Apple isn't really disclosing where their breakdown is. Uh, but uh, Apple did record report quarterly results for the fourth quarter. They had twenty. Point six billion dollars in profit on eighty three point four billion in revenue. I mean, to me, that, that is so much th- that's money. so much money. And then they're still saying that they 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 didn't meet expectations as they always do. And the stock has gone yes. down four percent in after after hours trading. No surprise. Um, but the gross margin for the quarter forty two point two percent compared to thirty eight point two last year. Uh, I mean. Just phenomenal numbers. An iPhone obviously continues to be the dominant, the dominant uh, device of all the items they 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 uh, sell. I mean, the Macs have gone up. I mean, eleven percent for Mac now. That's like insane for Mac. I mean, they. I remember they were like five and six percent uh, of the market share, but now to have eleven percent of their revenue is now part of, the, of part of Mac is pretty impressive. Um, well, they caught over. The, the problem they had, which was yeah. that they weren't giving us new products and they weren't giving us uh, new products that had significant improvements. Right. And now they are. And look at that. People are suddenly buying more Macs. Yeah, of course, that doesn't even include the new Macs that just came out. This is up right. through September, so it'll be interesting to see where those numbers come uh, after the you know, the first quarter of uh, 2022, uh, where where this happens. So, uh, definitely going to be interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, if you look at uh, if you look at six colors breakdown, other other big huge jump was was uh, services twenty two percent. Wow, I mean the the, the services uh, uh, piece is just just has just increased um, just tenfold. I mean it, it's just. It, best best ever when it comes to comes comes to this and the iPad the iPad uh, showed some really big huge numbers still year over uh, from third quarter to fourth quarter twenty one percent revenue change uh, so uh, and iPhone revenue almost thirty eight point nine uh, uh, billion 
in sales for iPhone. I mean, just iPhone in itself is, is just, a, you know, it just continues. And, and, uh, I think, the, uh, uh as they continue to create new products, they're going to continue to uh, continue to excel with this. So, I mean, yeah, people weren't too terribly excited about the iPhone 13 because there wasn't a huge dramatic change between the 12 and the 13, but enough that it, it well, got some based activity. Based on sales, must be exci- people are interested. <laughs> people are excited. Yep, they're buying it. Yep. So, a couple, a couple of things that were reported uh, that they're having some some you know, potential challenges. One of them was uh, Apple. Uh, uh, Tim Cook did talk about that they are focusing on app app store uh, privacy and security of the app store because uh, uh, they're uh, they have been dealing with some regulatory issues. Uh, Apple has been facing with uh, different uh, pl- uh, places around the world, uh, and they are focusing trying to get. A better handle on privacy and security of the app store, which is uh, you know something they got to do, and then of course a lot of the a lot of the heat that came from the antitrust lawsuit between them and Epic uh, is always mm-hmm. has not made uh, things too ex- terribly exciting either. So, uh, so they are giving uh, they are given a deadline of, in December to make a lot of the changes that they need to make to to uh, get uh, get this in place. Uh, did you have, did you have any uh, insights or on, on this app store thing? I, I think when uh, when the dust settles from this, it's going to have a neglig- negligible impact on Apple's revenue. Right. Yeah, I I think that most people will continue to do in-app purchases because, uh, like Apple in-app purchases, because right. it's there, it's easy, it's convenient, and uh, and for the people where it matters, they feel that there's more of a trust that they can have because Apple is managing the transaction. Yep. Um, other thing that's really affecting them that there was there, they said they have about 6 billion in loss uh, for, uh, because of supply constraints on all products and notably the iPhone uh, 13, iPhone 13 supplies have been horrible. Um, so glad I got my iPhone when I did when it first came out and, yeah. and didn't, didn't lose it because of the credit card, the snafu, uh, that, uh, uh, Tim Cook did say that they, he does feel very good about where the demand is for the 13 of terms of, terms of sales versus the t- iPhone 12, but supplies are constraint and Apple hasn't been able to meet demand because of that reason. But that, that, that's a whole industry wide thing. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm looking, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm looking at uh, computer monitors, uh, Dell specifically, they, they go out almost six to eight months of before a monitor is available. I mean, the supply trains, wow. the supply trains are just so incredibly uh, thin right now. Um, so, but as the article said here in Mac rumors uh, that they did lose about six billion in, in revenue because of the because of the supply constraint issues. So well, there are a long wait times for the iPhone 13, 13 Mini, 13 Pro, and 13 Pro Max. So it's affecting all 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 four models in the line. So. Buyer beware if you're looking for a new iPhone now. You might you may have to be wait a little. You may have to wait a little bit uh, before that uh, mm-hmm. before that pops in here. So, um, and as I mentioned, the services industry it was all time quarterly revenue record. Um, the the uh, uh, Apple has a the, has almost 745 million paid subscribers, ranging from Apple Music to the in app purchases, uh, the subscriptions that people are paying through the App Store. So. It just keeps going and going. Fitness Plus, you know, I, I have the Apple One um, bundle, um, and now we got SharePlay, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, uh, and um, expanding to more countries. So it's just going to continue to grow. I don't, I don't see it going anywhere but up. I agree. Uh, all those times when Apple was really starting to make this push into uh, into really being a services company as as a big part of their business. And I was saying, they're doing it. This is where they're going. Yeah. And people were uh, were saying, no, nope, no, nope, Apple, this is not uh, a place Apple is going to have success. Well, it looks like this is a place where they can have success. Yep, absolutely. So, um, and uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, uh, iOS 15.1 was released uh, this past week, uh, along with uh, Mac OS Monterey. So there, there was a very busy week in the world of Apple when it comes to uh, OS updates yes. and releases, and, and all of us have been upgrading. And um, but let's let's talk about uh, iOS 15.1 a little bit here. Uh, 
everything that's fun that's 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 new uh the biggest thing was share play and uh I don't know about you. I, I'd start trying to play around with share play. It is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and it, have you have any experience with it so far? No. Uh, sadly, my week has been so busy that uh, uh, coordinating with someone to try share play, I just haven't been able to make it happen. Yeah. Well, I guess you and I uh, should try it then. <laughs> yeah, we should because yeah. I, yeah, I haven't been able to do this yet with anyone. Yeah. No. You know my number, so let's let's give it a shot here. That's, that's a good point. I, I do. So it yeah. turns out I actually didn't have an excuse. Yeah, no, that's what, yeah, you're I just busy. Didn't realize it till right now. Um, so I am pretty pretty impressed with it uh, so far. I tried it, and um, cool thing of not only, of course, the big thing that they advertise was the fact that they, you can um, you can share the watching a movie with somebody, whether it be Disney or Netflix or whatever on your on your iOS device, and be able to be almost sitting in the same room. Uh, the biggest cool thing though is the sharing of your screen, and you can, and this is going to come in in handy for tech support because now someone can share their screen and you'd be able to say, Hey, look at this on my phone. Why is this doing this or doing, you know, tech support for your family. Um, and uh, yes, <laughs> I am really looking forward yeah, to that. I started, I started playing around with it a little bit and, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive that people, I mean, I can, I could see their screen. They could see my screen and, uh, you could point things out. I, I have to share with you the way I've been dealing with this with family members. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can't wait to get all of them on iOS 15.1. Yeah. Um, so, so, like, uh, I'll use my parents as an example. And I'm trying to walk them over the phone through through fixing a setting or something. And they're just not getting what I'm saying. And uh, um, so I'll have one of them take a photograph of the other person's iPhone screen and then text it to me. <laughs> You do what you have yeah, to of course. your family. And uh, once once they've installed iOS 15.1, I won't have to do that anymore. Because, you know, it's it's always went the, the same thing. You tell someone, tap this, and, th okay, now tap this. And they don't understand you, and they tap the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And now they're going down a different path without realizing that, that they aren't uh, doing what you thought you were telling them good times so anyhow i'm excited for yeah this. oh yeah for sure um so yeah share play is here it's finally they, they couldn't release it when it first came out there were some too many bugs so apple decided to uh to hold back on it until this this 15.1 version now we'll be talking about 15.2 just near the bit here beta has already come out so of course there's never a dull moment with when it comes to beta here uh but mm -hmm. um the uh the other thing too is in the i in the iphone 13 pro and 13 pro max the pro res support is now in play uh so now you can go in and set your video capture and be pro res format uh in the camera app uh this wasn't beta three of, of, of 15.1. So you could, you could test it, uh, to way to enable this. You got to go into pro res, um, is go into settings, then camera, then enable pro res under formats. Uh, pro res is useful for editing, but it takes a huge amount of storage pace. And I'll, I'll also add that caveat. If you bought an iPhone 13 pro and it doesn't have at least 256 uh, gigabytes of space, you're out of luck. It's not going to work because Apple has restricted, the uh, the use of ProRes unless you had at least a 256 uh, gigabyte internal drive uh, with and this that's smart. I think it's smart because those files minute or two minutes is going to be 10 and 20 gigs probably so it'll just get absolutely enormous yeah you don't have space on a uh, iPhone 13 to uh, shoot a feature length movie no no not at all so i went with the 256 because i don't i'm not a heavy video shoot i don't shoot a lot of uh shoot a lot of video but i think that's going to be it's a good sweet spot uh that'll give me an, enough that if i do it will decide to do a pro res video we have, of course got to try it out so uh yeah. and see how, how really good it is and uh, uh but uh uh that's a good sweet spot, but there are plenty of people who are buying the five twelve and the one one terabyte uh, space and spent some good money for that. So if they're if you're a heavy duty video user, you're probably going to want to consider the the the, the higher the the bigger space uh, for your phone. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, 
And then uh, the other thing a lot of people were complaining about was the macro mode, which I don't mind, honestly. Uh, the 13 uh, Pro has uh, that, that, that macro mode where you just go and zoom up and you focus on something. It's up to two, two centimeters. And it ought, the camera automatically adjusts. It sees that you're getting really close, and it just uh, it just toggles right into the into that ultra wide format, so you can get really close to an object. Um, well, they now have added the, uh, the the ability to turning that off. There's a switch that you can go in there and go in the camera setting and just uh, check it off and say you don't want the, that auto macro uh, toggle to to be there. So um, I think that's smart. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of people just don't like it, and they're uh, um, they're not, uh, they don't like to have it turned on. So I, I would probably leave it turned on because yeah, me too. I, I love doing close up shots, but if I was setting up a shot where there's something close that I want to make sure stays out of focus, then I would want to have the ability to turn it off. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Good call. Absolutely. So, uh, and then the other thing too, I just, I just did it, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine vaccination record. We were just talking about that earlier with our third shots here. Um, in iOS 15.1, you'll be able to add your vaccination record in the health app. So if your health app is linked to your doctor and has all the information about your vaccines, which mine was, it automatically will allow you to add it to the, um, uh, to the wallet the wallet app and it'll have a QR code. So if someone needs to scan uh, to prove that you are vaccinated, um, that's there now. And it's awesome. And I know some people are probably not too excited about that. If they like privacy, then don't use it <laughs> basically. Uh, but uh, well, it gives you more privacy than, uh, than handing someone a card that has all your information on it. So oh, for sure. You know, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, there, there was a big problem with 50, iOS 15.0 when it first came out about unlocking your uh, your iPhone uh, with your Apple Watch. And it was fixed with 15.01, kind of. Uh, but 15.1, it is working again. And, uh, of course, you're upgrading the watch OS to 8.1. Uh, and uh, that should take care of it as well. So, uh, so that was a, a good thing that they fixed that finally. Um, other thing I was going to talk about is HomePod. Now, HomePod 15.1 software is out as well, and I updated all my HomePods. I'm sure you did as well. And right away, yeah, because I know you're the big home, you're a big HomePod user, and so am I. Um, the lossless audio in Dolby Atmos with spatial audio is now available for the HomePod. That's the HomePod and the HomePod Mini. Um, so uh, the way you go into that is you actually go into the Home app, you open up the Home settings, tap your profile, and under the media. There's uh, you tap in Apple Music, and then from there you can toggle on lossless audio and Dolby Atmos. Uh, so I had thought would I mean if you maybe you I'll give a little more insight again about audio. We've talked about this before. Even though this is a Bluetooth type of device, are you truly getting this this audio? Yes, because the way you're getting it in this case is not Bluetooth. It's Wi-Fi. So you have the bandwidth on Wi-Fi that you don't on Bluetooth. So you can send those, uh, those larger files through so you can play the, uh, the higher quality audio. So, yes, you actually are getting uh, uh, higher quality audio files this way. Okay. Great. And then um, uh, Home App added some features, including uh, uh, some automatic uh, triggers that can be created based on HomeKit-enabled sensors. Uh, the tech humidity, air quality, or light level. Um, the shortcuts, they've included new actions that uh, for overlaying text and images uh, or, or GIFs, GIFs, if you, whichever you prefer. And uh, our new and there's some new Siri games. I haven't even looked at that yet as far as that goes. Um, in the iPhone 12, the battery algorithms um, have been updated, so it'll give you a better estimate of uh, how much battery capacity you have uh, over time. So they've improved that. That's great. Um, iPad now has live text uh, improvements. Uh, the updated uh, the update added the above listed features and support for live text in the camera app. So not even texting, taking pictures with your iPad, uh, the camera can uh, detect text phone numbers and just like it can on your iPhone, which is great. Because uh, although I'm not a big huge fan of taking a picture with my iPad, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I'm not 
but when I need to do it, I really need to do it. Right. So it, I want it, things to, to work there so that the, the rare time when that becomes the camera that I have to use, I just want everything to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and there were some bug fixes, which we always can expect um, uh, with the photo storage, with the weather app, the wallet app, Wi-Fi. Uh, the photo app uh, may have incorrectly reported the storage is full. And when you're importing photos and videos, weather app may not show current temperature from my location or may display colors of animated background. You know, so a multitude of bugs that you're dealing with here. Uh, and uh, yeah, available Wi-Fi networks may not be detected. I was seeing that actually on my first gen iPad. And I was saying the Wi-Fi was off, but really it was on. <laughs> so, um, yes, I was seeing that too. Yeah. So. It looks like that I the, the, they have done done some good bug bug fixes on that too. So, but go out get it if you're using 15.0 or 15.0.1. I would hope uh, go out update it. It's still well worth the upgrade. Um, it's 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 safe to do so, and uh, it, we, you definitely should uh, go uh, jump on it. So, um, and then let's yep. yeah, go go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, I I was just. Uh... Uh, reaffirming what you said with the big yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then uh, let's talk a little bit about beta. Uh, beta this week, uh, right away this week, uh, 15.2 beta 1 was released. It was released to public as well as to uh, developers. Um, and uh, so the biggest features that were added that's new in, in 15.2 is app privacy report. Um, and... Uh, this is one of the additions that Apple showed off at uh, WWDC. It's a new privacy feature that is designed to allow users to see how often apps have access to their, to their sensitive information, which is great. I want to be able to see this. I know we had talk, made a huge deal out of this during Dub Dub, uh, and uh, it's mm -hmm. finally here, and we can actually see what these apps are doing. It's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm interested to see where they, where they, uh, where some of these apps are looking at, and at least have an understanding. I'm sure Facebook's going to light up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, it, it, it tells you if it's contacted other domains, how it's recently uh, contacted them. So you're going to get some pretty good details um, with the app privacy report uh when with 15.2 we start testing that so um and then the other the other feature they added was auto call the feature that lets you uh uh let's call emergency services with a series of button presses it's been updated in 15.2 you can now press the side bet button rapidly multiple times to initiate or hold the the side button and the volume uh, button together i don't know if you're if you need emergency i don't know if you're going to have the coordination to do that <laughs> honestly um what do you think? Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to try this out, but I also don't. No, because it'll call 911. Call emergency <laughs> services. Um, but the way Apple has everything set up right now, well, prior to 15.2, for calling emergency services, unless this is something you practice all the time, the fastest way to do it is to unlock your phone, tap the phone icon, tap the 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 keyboard button thing so that you have the number pad and then tap 911 and call. Yep. It's uh, which is crazy, but I mean, all the other, here's the shortcut thing. Here's the fast way. That's not <laughs> stuff people are going to remember no. when they have a crisis situation. No. And, uh, and I, and I've seen people like at, at uh, traffic wrecks at yeah. intersections because they happen all the time around me. And, and there's people looking at their at their iPhones trying to figure out how to call the police and uh, and I and I'm just like swipe phone 911 dial and because it's faster so if you can do something where you just jam the side button a lot and then all of a sudden it calls 911 okay that's that's a lot easier to remember absolutely absolutely um and uh yeah, that's about it with 15.2. Uh, it's again, it's beta. Don't, as I always say, other than Warren, we always say don't, don't download beta unless you have a, an extra device and, and not be your primary device that you're using every day because you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I, I will not channel Warren on this one. No, I, I will I, channel you. I will not. You're absolutely right. I, I only put it on devices that I, I don't care if they'll 
blow up because I can fix them later. <laughs> yes. That's why yes. I have extra iPhones and extra and, and one extra iPad. So um, they did seed out a first beta for watch 8.3, which was interesting. They skipped that two. So I'm not sure why they did that, but uh, they did. Um, and uh, again, is, go ahead. Didn't 8.2 come out as the update this week for Apple Watch? I, that was, I think it's still 8.1, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, I'm about to look, because yeah. why not? Um, yeah, let's see. Watch. Can I go into settings? About. And, You'll be quicker than me. Um, 8.1, you're right. Yeah. Okay. So they didn't, uh, they didn't release it. So, again, they don't get a lot of details. There isn't really... Um, there really wasn't much. Um, it seems like the updates throughout, the, uh, e- even the updates for the Apple Watch have gotten a lot more efficient and it hasn't taken as long as they've done in the past. Uh, they'll, they'll download it into the, to the iPhone and then it's ready for it to be pushed to the, to the watch. And it's, it's gone, uh, you know, quite well, I must say. Yes. So much better than it was in the beginning. Yep. I must say. So, uh, so we got, uh, so we got that. And then I, now, tvOS, of course, they release stuff. Nothing, nothing too terribly exciting about that. iPad OS is also updated as well. So, uh, so the beta is, uh, going strong as it always does here. So, um, next story, I mean, uh, they did also release the AirPods, the AirPods uh, 3. We did talk about it, uh, uh, the last few weeks as once they were announced and all now everybody's got them in their hands and doing a lot of comparisons uh, between the two. Uh, I was glad, as I mentioned last time, that uh, that Apple did put a midline version of the AirPods as available um, mm-hmm. as far as that goes. So you, so really you have to ask the question, would you get the third generation AirPods or, or whatever they're calling them, AirPods 3 or the AirPods Pro? Um, well, the notable difference is, I mean, I'm using the AirPods Pro, really like them. They've got the uh, the AirPods Pro have the silicon tips that you can go in to, to, for adjustments or for your ears. Uh, they are saying that the, AirPod, the AirPods 3 do fit better than, the, than the, the, the second gen AirPods that are still on the market. Um, and also are shorter and about the same uh, same length as the AirPods Pro, so they look pretty close. The uh, uh, the case is about the same too. It's wireless charging, um, so you really got some pretty close comparisons. Your pricing though, you got one seventy nine for the AirPods three, and then you have two forty nine for the Pros. But you also can find the Pros on sale a lot. I've I've, I've noticed um, as of late that uh, there there is a uh, that you can that can be had. I think Amazon's been selling it for like one ninety nine, so it's extra twenty bucks. But what are you going to get? What are you gaining with the pros? Well, you're gaining the noise cancellation, which I think is awesome. Um, and mm-hmm. and uh, the, I believe they both have the spatial audio. Um, yes. uh, but the pros also have the transparency. So uh, that's really the notable big differences between the two. Uh, and I I can t- I can attest b- b- from experience that. Uh, uh, that uh, the that that does work very well, uh, and and really gives you some good noise cancellation. Um, so uh, it really, it's you've got to choose which which one you really want. And and I I think that the three are the 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 AirPods three are perfectly good uh, models. Which ones do you have? You have the Pros, or do you have the AirPods? I I have the Pros. Yeah. and uh, I I had my airpods up until like a, a week ago when i gave them to a friend who uh yep. who lost theirs so i'm like look here just take these yeah. no sweat <laughs> I, you know i should sell the stuff that i have yeah. but i just keep, like giving it away to people i know I, I do i'm not doing capitalism very well at all yeah um anyhow airpods pro and uh, and i'm really happy with them so much so that at night if i'm watching tv on the couch Instead of uh, pulling out my my big JBL wireless uh, headphones for watching TV, I'm just using my AirPods Pro now. Yeah, no, I, I really like them. I mean, it freaks me out watching. Yeah, watching Apple TV Plus. I was watching the morning show a couple times now. Now we're sadly not been having any Ted Lasso episodes. I'm going through withdrawal already. I'm sure many of us are. Mm-hmm. Um, but just sitting there and, and turning your head left and right, I'm like, oh my god, where am I? <laughs> it's it's uh, it's it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, to, yeah, I have to sit when uh, when I'm watching TV with my AirPods Pro because otherwise, yeah, the sound for me just kind of gets disoriented. Like, wait, no, where where am I and where where are the people? Yep. 
Yep. So, uh, so check them out and, uh, you, 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 uh, I can, I can attest that, uh, you, uh, definitely can, uh, go with either model and be very happy with it. Uh, I wouldn't cut corners and go with the, the, the low end model unless you really are trying to cut some cost, uh, because you'll be much happier with the at least the threes, uh, with that. So, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, unless you have a, a very specific use case where that entry level is the right thing for you, spend the extra money and get the, uh, the the airpods three absolutely so um a couple stories i brought over i was going we were going to talk about last week but i i'm going to brought, talk about this week um uh, i found this really cool poster and and i got it blurred actually on my screen right now that's actually in dark in this room but I, I had it framed and everything it's the evolution of the iphone um and uh it is behind me uh if you're watching on live video but it's probably a little blurry you probably can't see too much but i have a link to it in the show notes here uh but i bought it from etsy there was a, a, a something that was actually put this together i think it's really really cool uh and um it is really cool i, I i'm i'm, I'm I've, got, I've got it has my background and i really love it <laughs> so and to, to go back and look at all the iphones and just and and, and jeff you probably could just go look at yourself to see of all the models you owned uh i I'm double checking the list right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's uh I've bought a lot of iPhones. I counted wow. 18 for me. <laughs> I'm not even going to count cuz I'm just looking at this and and uh, and I'm seeing dollar signs for the Oh my gosh, I, it's just insanity. I know that I I I but you know I, I was part of the, uh, the the upgrade program so after time um i uh i just went through it and uh and and it, it is what it, it was what it was but the only phone i did not own i did not own the first gen i did not i did not uh, drink i did the, own the first gen. i didn't drink the kool-aid until 2008 the 3g was my very first but if i go through each one of these i had the 3g the 3gs the 4 the 4s the 5 i did not have the 5c did have the 5s had the 6 then yeah, i didn't have a 5c and then I went through the six. I had the plus ever since that point. Six plus, six S plus. Uh, I did have the SE. I bought that as an extra phone. So I guess that counts. <laughs> yep, that counts. I didn't get an SE. And I had the seven plus. I had the eight plus. And then I bought the 10 and the eight plus within two months of each other. There's always, you go back to listen to one of the old episodes. I said, I'm not going to buy it. I like the eight plus because it was a bigger phone. I gave in and got the 10. <laughs> That's funny. Two months later, and, and, uh, and sold the eight plus like right away, and took, of course, took a loss. Um, I do have the ten R's. I'm actually using the ten R as a camera right now, um, and then I've had each one ever since: the ten S Max, the eleven Pro Max, the twelve Pro Max, and of course now the thirteen Pro Max. Yeah, and looking at <laughs> at the list, um, didn't get the five C. Didn't have I didn't the uh, the iPhone SE. Nope. Um, uh, but like pretty much everything up through the 10 and uh, and then i jump from 10 to 12 pro yeah so check it out it's a it's a fun poster and i i actually print it, when you when you buy it it gives you like four different sizes so i i have the 24 by 36 and i print had it printed through a printer and uh and then put it in and had it framed and, and actually it's really good quality and the, this guy did a really good job he's got a mac one it's probably the right size to fit in an ikea frame yeah exactly uh, and that's probably the frame i have behind me here um and uh uh but it, it's fun they even have, he doesn't have even has one for an iphone uh for max too uh so not every mac but uh it's it's a, that would be a really big poster yeah, or really it would be pictures. and then this actually is running out too because there's a lot of iphones on this page <laughs> so uh uh so thought that was cool um other topic i wanted to talk about here is uh, it was one thing i discovered here uh lately with um um, with with the T-Mobile and an iPhone, you had uh, all of a sudden it started saying 5G UC, and I'm like, what the heck is that? I didn't even see that before. Um, and this is this is on T-Mobile cellular network, and uh, and what does it stand for? And it stands for ultra capacity. So when you go when you're anywhere in the, on the T-Mobile network in 5G, uh, I got a link in the show notes with an article about this uh, through uh, through Hot Who Geek actually. Um, uh, the icon indicates that uh, that's the type of connection, the, the network that you're connected to. Um, and iPhones in September of, of this year, 2021, started seeing that this started beginning to appear uh, on um, on this. And what is 5G uh, ultra capacity? Um, it's a 
it, uh, T-Mobile divides their network into two types: the extended range, uh, which is the t- type of 5G that is roughly roughly as fast as 4G LTE, but blankets most of the country, including most of the less built-up area, rural areas, than the 5G ultra capacity, which is faster 5G that prov- promises greater than 4G LTE speeds. Me being in a big metropolitan area like Chicago, uh, you're definitely going to see uh, some you know ultra high speeds. Um, and so you're technically uh, either connected to the mid band or the millimeter band wave, depending on where you are, what they're what they are. Um, and you know the other question too is is how is this appearing on with other carriers? Uh, other carriers will see different types of logos. I don't know if it's necessarily say you you see whatever AT and T or Verizon or any other services have it, or an Android devices you you won't see that actual logo. But that could change in the future. Not like I care about Android. But uh, did you you don't uh, you guys get the, the high capacity speed? I'm, I gotta figure out which carrier you have. I, I'm on AT and T, yeah. and my my interpretation of this is that uh, 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 Team Bubble was showing 5G for their 5G in name only network, and then you see when it's actually a 5G network. And T-Mobile was doing it the other way, where they'd show 5GE right. when it's not really the 5G network, and then just 5G when it's really the 5G network. Yep. So it's uh, interesting, and I can definitely tell you that the 5G network has vastly improved. Um, and I, I, I can just I could tell you that uh, the T-Mobile is the champ. It really is. It just is just amazing um, uh, how how incredible the speeds have been. It's always fun. I I drive I always drive past a uh, if I'm near by, nearby a tower. I'm sitting in my car at stoplight, of course, and run speed tests, and I get 800 and 900 megabit speeds. <laughs> it's like holy, yeah, it's insane. It's insane. When, yeah, when when you're on a true 5G network, it, it's absolute insanity. So I'm I mean, every, yeah. T-Mobile still never ceases to amaze me. I'm so happy I switched them and. I've been a very, very happy customer with theirs, excuse me, for quite a long time here. So, um, yeah, a couple of years, at least three years, I think now it's got time has flown by. Nice. Time has flown by here. So, um, and then a couple other tips here I want to talk about real quick. Uh, uh, OSX Daily did this, uh, story about how to back up your voice memos, um, on your iPhone. I don't know if you do use the voice memos app very often. I've used it once in a while. I, I used it uh, a long time ago to do some testing, and then because I thought, oh, this would be a great way to take notes, and it turns out for me it wasn't. So, okay. um, no, I haven't used it in a super long time. Yeah, it's been a while, but there's still a lot of people that do use it, and, and if you don't want to buy a, a different app to do this, and there's plenty of apps out there that record voice memos. Um, and and, they, and Apple's made it really easy how to back it up. Um, you can back it up to iCloud, actually. So if you go into the settings app in the home screen, and um, then you go and tap your name or your, or your Apple ID that's listed in the settings, uh, you scroll down and go down to iCloud. And then once you go to iCloud, there is a choice under iCloud that says voice memos. You just make sure that's turned on. And that's going to be backing up. Um, uh, that's going to be backing up the... Uh, Every single voice memo in in iCloud, so you, you'll you'll be confident from now on that the, everything will be back up there. You know, I've got more space in iCloud I know what to do with, so I, I have everything backed up there now. Uh, with having the two terabyte plan with the family sharing, uh, there's plenty of space for everybody. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, and then um, you are there are ways of backing up your voice memos if you wanted to use AirDrop. Um, if you're not using for iCloud, then you want to resort to maybe some little different less convenient ways of doing that um in the recording there is a little ellipse that's listed right next to the play button then the menu uh, of course the share sheet will come up and then you got share and then it'll give you the option to to, to airdrop the file and probably airdrop it to your mac or to to somebody else if you so choose um and then uh and uh there are also other ways you can share it other ways. So they've gone real, they've gotten real flexible with the voice memo uh, app and uh, really give you options to, to really uh, back things up and, and do a good job of, uh, of backing them up. So uh, my tip for this week on the voice memos app. And, That's awesome. And uh, one other thing we'll talk about here, this is actually was in Lifehacker and uh, the, uh, talking about your iPhone that actually had some secret codes. There are some hidden uh, numeric codes, and I've always had fun playing with this. You know, things like dialing, dialing star 67 in front of a number. Remember that when you would, it would shut off your caller ID yes. and, yes. and then 
uh, uh, pound three one pound was also known to work for placing anonymous call uh, anonymous calls um, uh, and then showing your old caller ID you can opt to turn it off um, you can dial star eight two of course ca this is carrier beware so depending on the carrier uh, it doesn't say that but I, I would I would venture to say that um, blocking outgoing calls um, if you want to hand uh, you're handing your iPhone over to someone. Can it be an excruciating exercise, as the article says? Uh, but if you want to, uh, uh, there is a quick dialer code to block all outgoing calls. You dial star three three pound, followed by a four bit, four digit pin. So you like you do star three three pound, and then one two three four pound. That pin ensures someone can't easily disable the block, and. Once they hit the call button, the feature will load and it kicks into effect. That is really cool. I didn't even know that. <laughs> you could. That, that is cool. It, if, if, All right. So, <laughs> can you make a shortcut that does that? I would bet. You can, yeah. and then you can set it up so you just go, hey, S lady block calls. I think that that's one of your. One, hand someone one, the phone. That's one of your videos for, for coming up here to create that shortcut, huh? <laughs> well, I, I'm going to test it. Yeah. And if it works, yep, I guess I'll have to make a video. All right. We have to, we have to find out about that. Um, you always had the ways if you can check your your iPhone's cell signal strength, um, so you can go in and actually dial stars three zero zero one pound one two three four five pound star, and it'll bring up the field test menu and allows you to be able to measure the uh, how your signal strength is. That that's getting some really geeky stuff in here now. Uh, it, it is, but it doesn't have as much info as it used to. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, and then checking your IMEI uh, without having to go through a bunch of stuff, you can di just do a, a dialing star pound, zero six pound, uh, and then it'll give your IMEI information. It comes right up on the screen. It's a lot quicker. Uh, then there's you know, there's codes for your carrier details and enabling call waiting. So, yeah, check out this article. I thought this was uh, interesting uh interesting information uh out there for uh, some tips on how to uh how to do that so um one more thing i wanted to talk about is um is that there's an app a pick and actually this is actually an upgrade to an app and i absolutely love camo it's a made by a company called reincubate and i'm using it right now i use it to uh i use it to use my iphone as a webcam on my mac when um, we're when i'm doing any uh, video and that's how i do the podcast is using my mac and my iphone and an iphone um and Camo did some pretty amazing upgrades this this time around. Um, and they've added Snap AR as some of their features. Uh, and there's video on there from um, from the founder of Camo. It give gives you some of the steps here. But there's a lot of uh, uh, AR that you can get, you can start playing around with uh, some of the stuff. It all depends on on the app and what you're doing. Um, but uh, uh, Camo is a really a really really great app. They have a uh, the Camo Pro is four ninety nine four ninety nine a month. Uh, or you can pay thirty nine ninety nine annually, but they're not saying this in the article. I I paid the lifetime subscription of seventy nine ninety nine, so uh, I'm a lifetime subscriber to Camo now. So um, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. Um, Camo on the Mac side of things, the app they did add some really cool presets. If you aren't noticing, if you're watching the video and notice my my name and my, and the logo for I, in touch with iOS, they've now added some some really cool overlays uh, that you can add and you can and you can edit them and you can uh, modify them. Um, they, they they've even add, added some from, uh, some of the cool uh, 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 modes here uh, where you can like change make your face a it's like a preset you can. Uh, you can you can uh, do things like a tropical Hawaii thing, and you can do all kinds of crazy things. I'm doing here on the video. If people aren't seeing this, but that that wasn't tropical Hawaii. It didn't seem I, like I, I, but that, that's what it said it was. But uh, there was a, where is that? I was just playing with it earlier, and I'm not seeing it here. But um, they they do give you options where you can uh, uh, put like emojis in, in your face and all that fun stuff. So that they they've added some fun things to this. Uh, I think this is in the overlay. Uh, uh, but anyway, it's it's it, it, it they do have that too. So, so they they really come a long way with this app and uh, uh, check it out. They, it does have a free trial, so you can try it out with your iPhone. Uh, I mean, for those of you who want to, because uh, I tell you, the, I will tell you what, the iPhone is the probably the greatest uh, webcam you could ever have. Uh, it, it is pretty awesome. It really is, and luckily I have a second iPhone that I can use. So that because that's with me doing the shows all the time with uh, talking about iPhone, you know, it's hard for me to have that as my cam and then I have to go back and look at it during the show. So it does 
does be helpful that uh, that uh, it does have that. So, um, um, but with that, uh, I think that's a wrap for this week. Uh, we talked about lots of great stuff, and uh, glad everybody that was, was here. Fast. It did it's flown by here. So, let's uh, go ahead and wrap things up for this week. Uh, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, which is feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at intouchwithios. We are recording the, uh, the show on our live stream every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash DaveG65, where you can also watch past streams as well as listen to any of the episodes. Uh, we also have a link in the show notes here for uh, the In Touch with iOS uh, Flipboard magazine, where many of the topics we talk about are posted there on our Flipboard magazine, so go ahead and check that out as well. Um, you also can subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where you all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And Jeff, as always, thanks for being here. Where can people find you? Oh, well, thanks for having me back. It's always a blast. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, jgamut, both places, youtube.com slash jgamut for my videos. And, uh, and apparently you've committed me to uh, yet an- another video. So. Hey, I, I, I always have to try, try something to get you a video. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate that. So thank you. And, um, uh, um, uh, what are the other shows? Big show on Thursdays, Mac show on Fridays. Uh, Mac Voices live on Tuesdays, and I did Mac OS Ken this week. Yes, as well. I heard uh, we had, I, go take a in a few minutes. That was a great episode. I just I just listened. Uh, check yeah, check that out. You get to listen to the story about how I fell on my butt twice, <laughs> and, and Ken and, and Ken took full advantage of that. So <laughs> he totally did. Well, good for him. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. And we'll talk again soon.